back some predictions from it. So I would say that trying to judge string theory today is like trying to judge a, a block of wood that hasn't yet been turned into a violin. You know, it's in an infant stage. It's a very difficult problem. The progress has been astounding. There are questions that we've resolved in the theory that I, 20 years ago, and I think my colleagues would agree, would think we'd never get this far mm -hmm. in certain domains, but we've not made enough progress in the other direction, which is making experimental predictions, and that's just the state of being at the cutting edge. Well, and it also, to me, as a journalist and as someone who deals with the public, uh, it goes back to the question you were saying before, uh, whatever you say, just spell its name right. You know, the fact that there is a controversy about it gets people to talk about it, you know, and even think about the, the controversy of, of it, and they, they begin to talk about it, and there can't be any, anything wrong with people talking about science. And speaking of which, this is Science Friday from NPR News. I'm Ira Flato here at Arizona State University. Um, as part of the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of my have a drink of water. As part of the symposium they're having here, and uh, we'll, we're going to go to the audience. A question? Go right, go right there. Every week I have the same part of the show. I need a glass of water. Go ahead. I wanted to, to come back. You mentioned about the uh, the expanding universe and then the cosmology and how uh, your uh, Lawrence, your, your your pun that uh, eventually uh, we won't be able to see anything at all because of the uh, rapid expansion of the universe. And I wanted to know, like in your uh, professional opinion, whether I'm misinterpreting this in that, uh, is it at all possible that um, the 96% that we don't know right now could be explained by it's too far away for us to see, it's moving too fast, and we're in a localized universe now? Well, well, I mean, oh, I, yeah, your question went in a different direction than I thought it would. I, I think the answer is n no to that particular part. I think, I mean, what we're, we're measuring things we can see here and now. We're measuring the acceleration of galaxies away from us. We're watching them speed up. And so we're seeing things hmm. in, in our universe. But, but what it does point out to me, and I think this is really maybe we should be humble, because one of the things we've recently discovered, which I think is fascinating, is that in the far future, because if dark energy persists, then astronomers in the far future will come up with a picture of the universe which is completely wrong. They're, every bit of evidence will suggest they live in a static, empty universe, exactly the universe we thought we lived in in 1900. And so uh, I like to say we, we're living in interesting times, namely the only time in the history of the universe when we, can, when we know mm. we're living in interesting times. But, but the more important point is it suggests that, that if, we're, if they're missing something then, maybe there are key parts of the universe that we're missing now. And while we have this incredible picture, that there may be things that are out there that are going to change it completely. And really, that's what makes well, science so exciting. Well, Lisa Randall was on the program a few weeks ago, and she talked about the fact that the reason why gravity is so weak here is that it may be part of another universe sitting right next to us, and it's just leaking into here. What it, do you think? Is that? It could be. I wouldn't bet on it, but it, but, <laughs> but it, but it could be. I mean, but the, could there be other universes it, that is, are around us that well, we don't know about? Well, she's talking about, in, in, in that context, they're talking about the possibility it comes from string theory, right, which she, is the extra right. dimensions, not yes. other universes in space, in our space, but mm -hmm. other universes in extra dimensional space, which is sort of one of the requirements of string theory. And it's certainly, uh, it's certainly possible. I don't, I don't personally think it's a very attractive picture, but, mm. but you yeah. will, we'll see. And we may, and there's some people who hope there may be evidence for it at the Large Hadron Collider. If the extra dimensions are large enough, maybe we'll be able to bang things together so hard that some of the energy leaks into extra dimensions. Again, I wouldn't bet on Brian? That. Yeah, which is a good point just to emphasize. I mean, we're talking about string theory and the fact that we've not been able to put on the table, do this experiment, and if you find this result, the theory is giving a result that's confirmed. If you don't find that, the theory is ruled out. We can't get to that stage. But it is possible at the Large Hadron Collider, long shot possibilities, that some of the features of string theory could be observed. Yeah. So this idea of extra dimensions, you know, slamming these protons together at very, very high speed and some of the debris gets jammed into the other dimensions and you recognize that by having a little bit less energy in our part of the universe than it's leaked yeah. away, that would be great. Finding these supersymmetric particles, that would be great. Creating a little microscopic black hole, again an idea that really has its origin in string theoretic ways of thinking about things, that would be spectacular. Yeah. So all these little pieces of the puzzle, were they to happen, again I consider it a long shot, but were they to happen again, you would have much greater confidence that this set of ideas is going in the right direction. Michael, i got about 30 seconds. Okay, I was just going to get back to the question asked, which sort of was, uh, could this cosmic acceleration go away? Uh, it's such an extraordinary thing. We haven't used the Do word. Do we know why it happened? Uh, well, why we, it kicked we, in at that We point. would say that dark energy has repulsive gravity. And so I think the question is an interesting one. 
And uh, that's an extraordinary thing. Carl Sagan used to say extraordinary results require extraordinary evidence. And 11 years ago, when, when this discovery was made, I don't think the evidence was there. And I think today I could tell the questioner that cosmic acceleration is not going away. Uh, the observations that have been made over the past 10 years have really nailed it. The universe is really speeding up, and we have to deal with that. It's a big, big mystery. All right, and there's your take-home for tonight, uh, talking around the dinner table. Uh, well, the universe is, is expanding, and it's not going away. Our program is produced by Christopher Intagliata, the senior producer, Annette Heist. Charles Berkowitz is our director. David Gurit, director from Washington. Flora Lichtman is our producer for digital media. Laura Pelcher is our producer for science and the arts. Our intern is Shelley Du Bois. Kevin Wade is our technical director. Carlos Asensio and Drew Reynolds, our audio engineers, also helping us out here uh, is Brent Gabrielson uh, here in Arizona State University. I want to thank our guest, Lawrence Krauss of Arizona State University, Michael Turner of the Cavalier Institute for Cosmological uh, Physics at the University of Chicago, Brian Green, professor of mathematics and physics at Columbia University and also head of the World Science Festival coming up in New York this June. Also, Stephen Weinberg, professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Texas at Austin and winner of the 1979 uh, Nobel Prize in Physics. We also would like to uh, do a shout out to KJZZ, our local Science Friday public radio station right here in the neighborhood. And thanks also to Arizona State University and the Origin Symposium for their hospitality in bringing us here. I'm Ira Flato in Arizona State University. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations and from ESPN, home to first and second round coverage of the Masters, April 9th and 10th on ESPN. From Linda Mood Bell, with spring instructional programs designed to help students improve reading and comprehension at lindamoodbell.com. And from the Annie E. Casey Foundation, promoting lifelong family connections for children and youth in foster care on the web at aecf.org. This is NPR, National Public Radio. Michelle Cadu's six-figure salary vanished with a pink slip and left her doing direct marketing work for $10 an hour. I sure didn't expect that that was going to be my part-time job after I got my MBA. I'm Lynn Neary, mastering the new economy, Ira. the survival job. Plus, the opinion page, yeah, next talk like of the nation videos. from NPR News. From NPR News in Tempe, Arizona, I'm Ira Flato with Science Friday. Out here in the desert, if you get away from the light pollution, the starry night has a real glowing presence, not just the odd twinkle you spot in the city. And seeing so much up there, it's hard not to wonder what are the chances we're really all alone in the universe. Some scientists say the appearance of life on Earth was improbable, like winning the lottery. Others are convinced the universe is teeming with life, they just haven't found it yet. This hour we'll talk about those possibilities with some top astrobiologists. How life springs up and how we might find it as we do or don't know it. You might be surprised where some scientists want to look. All coming up after this break. Stay with us.
From NPR News in Washington, I'm Lakshmi Singh. New York Governor David Patterson confirms there were fatalities during today's hostage crisis at an immigration center in Binghamton. An Hi everybody, please take your American seats. We're about to begin the uh, second hour. We need you all to have a find a seat. This will be this will be on the radio too. Yeah. We're also um, for the first time we're also video streaming this so people can watch it on their computers today. So y'all were great the first hour. Let's see if we can do even better the second hour. President Obama is urging European leaders to do more to help the US defeat insurgents in Afghanistan. In Strasbourg, France today, the president warned that while al-Qaeda remains a major threat to the U.S., the threat to Europe is greater for geographical reasons. In advance of the NATO summit, the president also spoke of the need to better prepare NATO for the challenges of the 21st century.